cool. All right, so I'm, I was just going to go over what uh, what you get with Singer. Singer is a uh, open source uh, standard for ETL jobs. Um, they have over a hundred different types of exports uh, available. Plus, you can always search GitHub uh, for something like tap dash like Airtable or something else that you'd want to find. Uh, so these are just the taps that they provide themselves. So what is a tap uh, behind the scenes? Uh, it's really something quite easy. It's uh, simply a JSON specification for a data stream. And they look something like this. So you can define a schema in JSON and then you can define a record in JSON and which schema that record should go to. What's cool about that is if you follow this format, then you get the, the power, the, the economies of scale, like the power of the community, everything that has been provided for you. Uh, the challenge is that uh, how do you run all of these ETL jobs? And they're pretty simple to run. It's really just running a command, giving it a configuration, pointing it at a data source. So like you pointed at GitHub or you pointed at Stripe. But uh, you are still, how, how do you schedule that? How do you run that? How do you uh, take it through the pipeline? That's still left up to you. So we, uh, at Cloud Posse, we're doing a lot of uh, analytics. And uh, if I go like to you know, our GitHub uh, dashboard, you can see how we can uh, view at a glance uh, you know, how our community is doing uh, by pulling in data uh, from GitHub. Uh, and also doing that together with our uh, Slack community. We also have KPIs for like QuickBooks and uh, Harvest or our time tracking and all of that stuff. So uh, how do we do this using text? Yes. So, um, so what, what I have here uh, on, our, uh, on this demo is a project that we created on CodeFresh and the project's called ETL. And there's a number of pipelines here. Uh, first of all, there's a build pipeline that builds the Docker image. Then there's a release pipeline that just cuts a release. Um, pretty straightforward. Uh, we're building the uh, Docker images in parallel. So we build a Docker image for uh, for the GitHub tap. This is what extracts the data and streams it in JSON. And then we build a Docker image for the Postgres tap. The Postgres tap is what ingests that data and writes it to a Postgres database. I could write it to multiple data sources at the same time using the same pipeline. Then I defined a pipeline here, GitHub to Postgres. And the GitHub to Postgres pipeline defines uh, the standard stages. Uh, so we prepare, uh, we set up the environment, we uh, perform an export where we uh, run the Docker container that extracts the data from GitHub. And then we perform a load where we just load that uh, data uh, that was uh, exported. A um, Couple things that are interesting here if you're using CodeFresh is uh, this trick here. This is what ensures that we never run the pipeline uh, more than once concurrently. So for example, what if something is taking, in this case, we run this pipeline on a uh, daily uh, schedule. What if for whatever reason that ETL job was running for over a day? Well, we wanna make sure that we're not piling these up. Uh, so this ensures that we only start the pipeline uh, if there's no, not, no other jobs running. It also exemplifies how to use retry steps in CodeFresh because uh, what you can do is uh, this step here is gonna exit non-zero if it's an error, meaning there's another job that's not our own. And then we're gonna retry that 10 times with an initial delay of 20 seconds and a back off of 1.1. Uh, so that delay is gonna progressively increase and slow down. So uh, tap, this is the uh, exporter. Uh, we run the Docker image that we built in uh, a previous uh, pipeline uh, to run the configuration for that uh, pipeline. So which basically is, is what, what's our GitHub token and what are the uh, GitHub repos that we want to synchronize. We just uh, run the entry point script, export it. And then we retry this as well um, if it fails. Then the, when that completes, uh, it will have written an artifact of the JSON data to the CodeFresh shared volume. Now we can just use that in the subsequent step, the target step. And this is where we then load that uh, JSON file uh, calling the entry point of the Postgres uh, target. So what does that look like in action? Uh, here are the builds. Uh, this just completed. It ran for 14 minutes, so I'm not gonna run it right now. Um, uh, maybe I'll kick it off just so you can see what it looks like. 
but it goes here. Here are those phases that uh, we saw described. Here was that wait step where it looked for other jobs running. There were none, so it was able to complete. It ran the export. This is what that looks like. So uh, all the stuff that's output to STD error, those are the metrics of basically the progress of the, the ETL job. And then the actual data is written to this file, uh, in this case called uh, github.json, and it looks like it's about 13 megs. Then we load that uh, file in the next step, and this is that target. Uh, it just does the inserts and everything uh, from that. Now, I'm sure we've all done ETL jobs or ETL scripts in the past. We've written them in all kinds of languages. Uh, that's fine. You can continue to do that. The benefit with doing this is that they become like Legos. They become like building blocks. So for example, what if uh, business requirements changed instead of, or in addition to sending it to Postgres, we wanted to send it to another target. We wanted to send it to like an Excel spreadsheet, maybe for finance, or we wanted to uh, send uh, some data to Prometheus instead so that you could see maybe the correlation of Git commits to uh, like build failures or something. You could do all that kind of stuff uh, just by plugging these different Legos together. Um, I'll kick off, uh, I'll just kick this off right now. And that we'll see kind of briefly what that experience looks like. If you use, use code fresh, uh, this is all pretty familiar. So it kicked off the job in about two seconds and now it's running through. Hey, Aaron. Okay. Yep. Good question. Um, what are you using for your dashboard itself? What is that so called? yeah, yeah. So um, we use another open source product. Uh, it's called Metabase. So if you go to meta, oops, metabase.com, uh, that's it. It's it's super easy to deploy. You can just run it. Well, you can definitely run it on Kubernetes. They have Helm charts for that. We run it personally on Heroku, uh, so it's just standalone. Uh, and it's I think we're running even like a developer plan or something because we don't need uh, much performance out of that. And uh, then then when you configure Metabase, if I go over here to admin. Um, you can uh, connect it to any number of databases. Uh, and then you can also go through and review the data models. So like, uh, so we have a couple different uh, databases here. Um, so like we have under our analytics database, we have, we ingest all of our AWS data. Uh, you know, the CSV data from billing, we ingest all of that. Uh, we ingest uh, the GitHub data, we ingest data from Harvest, HubSpot, our CRM. Uh, QuickBooks for finance, Stripe uh, for automated payments, and Trello uh, for task uh, tracking. Um, yeah, and it's basic. Some so, some of these are paid, so we use a service called Stitch Data. Uh, and Stitch Data helps with the ETL. Uh, they have uh, like hundreds of integrations here. Many of those are the ones that are open source there, but others are paid and uh, proprietary. Um, I guess I didn't click on sources. Any other questions, Dale or Alex? Uh, no, uh, yeah, I was just showing, showing um, your dashboard off a little bit. Yeah, uh, unfortunately I can't show too much. I would love to show more. Uh, let's see what, uh, what else, uh, because there's a bunch of sensitive information here. Uh, let's see what else, um, if I go to. GitHub looks interesting. Uh, yeah, yeah, so Git, well, GitHub was the one we were on, so if I'm going to go here to KPIs, uh, I can see kind of, uh, well, so, so this actually is an earlier dashboard where we combine GitHub, uh, basically community KPIs, so things based on Slack activity, uh, how many users uh, we have, uh, basically the, you know, the traffic, um, you know, uh, the comparison of our repos to our, uh, some of, you know, similar companies like Gruntworks. Um, Slack registrations per week. Uh, the our most popular repos, uh, like Jenkins. Um, this is really important for us because we have so many repos. And if you look at any one repo, it's kind of insignificant. But when you look at everything as a whole, it it, it turns out it turns uh, it turns into real numbers. Nice. Yeah. And these gaps are just like when like our uh, ETL job failed or something. So you know, it went down. Though it was, this was kind of scary. It was amazing to see what happened around Christmas time and New Year's. 
traffic across all our repos just dropped uh, uh, in half, right? And then uh, came back up shortly thereafter. Uh, distribution of our community uh, by geographies. Uh, this is based on self-reported time zones in Slack. And then, um, yeah, basically broken down by time zones. So Los Angeles uh, looks like uh, quite a lot here. That's where we're based, actually. <laughs> so, But under business, uh, so I have like similar ones for like customer dashboard that I'm currently working on, sales pipeline, uh, profit first, which is an accounting system that we, uh, which is an accounting strategy that we implemented, our expenses and our income. I said this is being ingested from Stitch Data? Yeah, with okay. using Stitch Data. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Well, uh, that I'll stop the uh, recording here. Uh, that's the demo for now.